Hey, what's up, listener? This is the Jack and Nerd Podcast, episode 126. Thanks for pressing play. We got a great geek news segment where we cover everything from Justice League, Spider-Man Homecoming, Godzilla, even some UFC news. We follow that up with a little discussion about what we can expect from the fourth season of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Is Ghost Rider going to save the show? Is anybody even excited that the show is coming back? We'll find out all in this edition of the Jock and Nerd Weekly for Friday, September 9th, 2016. It's the Jock and Nerd Podcast with your hosts, Anthony and Emma. Oh, hey, listener. What's up? My name is Imran. My name's Anthony. He's the jock. And he's the nerd. Welcome to the Jock and Nerd Podcast. Uh, holding down the third chair over there. That's the rug boy. What's up, rugs? Good earth to you. What's up, motherfuckers? <laughs> How's what's up, it? Dudes? What's up, dudes? How's it going? Anything oh, like I have to say that? No, that's your, isn't that your catchphrase? What's up, dudes? How's it going? <laughs> Like, I don't want to, like, leave you wanting for anything anymore. That's okay. Look, listen, it's been a long week. We're all exhausted. Anthony is still recovering from his Labor Day celebrations. So we're going to get on with the show, which is us just hanging out and geeking out about comic book, TV, and movie-related stuff. And sometimes actual comic books, like on paper and shit. They still make Wait, those. Ooh. This isn't the show where we discuss that football is back this Sunday? This is not the NFL season preview show. I'm sorry if that's what you thought it was, listener. What the fuck am I doing here? You've clicked on the wrong Anthony. I think you may have missed uh, your booking. We don't talk <laughs> about soccer on this show. We don't talk about the soccer or American football. Look, if you're a new listener, what we do talk about on the Jock and Nerd podcast is Geek news of the week. We're going to geek out about some MCU, DC, EU, TV and movie news. And then we're going to uh, find out what we know so far about Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. season four. Since it's the first one of the comic book shows coming back late September, I uh, want to get a little hype for it. I'm kind of excited for season four. They're doing a lot of crazy shit. Let's get to the news. The Jock and Ned Podcast. So last week, guys, all those rumors, remember, we're like, here's a bunch of rumors we discussed for an hour. And there was supposed to be some live event on the Friday. Well, it was all kind of a big bust there. Did, did you? Yeah, I feel like I wasted my life. Did you catch any of uh, the live event during the day at all? Anybody? No, I did not. I'll go with a big no. I had friends in town from Hawaii and we went to a music festival Ooh, instead. Hawaiian friends. That's fun. Well, they're Whoa. they're. Chicago friends that moved to Hawaii. Dude, it's expensive there. Show. They're they're still why they haven't yeah, moved dude. back yet? No, but it's it is quite expensive. It, they talk about it all the time. Like nine dollars or like six dollars for milk, two dollars for like an avocado. But the punch is cheap. <laughs> oh yeah. Look, yeah. you gotta ship everything on a boat. Like that, what do you think? It's gonna be cheap out there. I had a friend too. She lived out there. Oh, for- they, didn't, they didn't think it was gonna be cheap. Okay. Yeah. They, she- they knew. Yeah, she lived out there for a year, and then she's like, ah, oh, fuck this. And then they came back because it's just not sustainable. If you don't have a job, you got to work in the tourist industry. But Whoa. anyways, I watched a little bit of this live event, and it was in the beginning. It was just like two guys I didn't know sitting on a couch playing like the old side-scrolling Batman game on uh, like the NES or the Sega, and uh, I didn't know what was going on. And then, I, I read I read the uh, description prior yeah. to it happening, and yeah. it, it seemed like it was very video game focused. Yeah, it seemed to be a lot of games. So uh, I looked at the like what was coming up, and it was nothing about anything that interests me was all video games. So I was like, uh, all right, so this was a bust. But one rumor that was confirmed is uh, Joe Manganiello is cast as Deathstroke in Ben Affleck's solo Batman movie. Oh, shit. That shit is now official. So does this ma- validate the rest of the rumors? Uh, well, we'll, no, see. I don't think so. Like, uh, not always because you know how these things are. But that one, uh, there, <laughs> that one's true. Uh, I mean, if that one wasn't true, then you'd be like, well, this fucking rumor sheet is just completely false. They were so at least very, they nailed that one. Yeah, they were very specific rumors. So this thing specifically says it's been confirmed by Jeff Johns. It will appear in Affleck's upcoming Batman solo film. They haven't confirmed whether he's going to be in Justice League, but you got to imagine... It's going to be a little cameo, a little setup. In Justice League? Yeah. 
Uh, maybe? I, mean, I don't know. I've, I don't know where would you fit him in. Well, I think what they showed us, that thing he tweeted out had to be from Justice League because they don't, they haven't started production know. on Batman. I don't know. It could be t- Justice League footage, but it also could just be test footage. Don't forget they did they did Deadpool test footage. That's true. They've done other movies with just, te- like they did Ant-Man you test footage. You think that they would like release it though to the public if it wasn't like going to be in the movie? Yeah, they've released the Ant-Man test footage that was not in the movie. And oh, right, that's they- right. They did that. They did Deadpool test footage that ended up being in the movie, but it, it was still test footage. I hope he makes a cameo on Twitter, though. Yeah, well, and that was like that was like just Ben Affleck. Well, you think he probably? I don't think he even asked anyone. He's like, you know what? I'm fucking tweeting this out. I don't give a fuck what you guys think. You're gonna have to roll with it. I don't know. I wouldn't go that far. Do you think yeah, it was a pl- it was a plan? So it was a plan. Yeah. Hey, you're gonna leak this like this. There's no way when your work. I mean. We've talked about studios meddling and shit all the time. You think they're going to let Ben Affleck just be like, hey, do something without us knowing about it. This well, is I, it's, it seemed a very casual thing the way it was done. So if that was planned, kudos to them. It kind of uh, it seemed like he just did it. Uh, do you think he's the only villain in the Batman solo movie or he's a villain or well, not didn't, the didn't, villain? Didn't, didn't you read the rumor to us that he was a villain in a v- movie full of villains? Yeah, with uh, that was with the Deadshot and uh, Arkham, Everybody. possibly. Yeah. yeah, Amanda Wallers. Uh, so that's awesome. If they're gonna show us that, that's exciting because that was. Does kind it of give a cool cred- credibility to that rumor? You think that he's in the movie? I mean, you got to think that it's that this thing came true, and uh, that that why why not the rest of that the plot line that we read. Could also yeah, because be, it sounds like a crazy ass plot. It line is with a lot of people in it uh, with so. a lot of stuff going on. Yeah, but good for him, man. That guy, he's gonna be great in the role. Like they couldn't have picked a better Destro. He looks like him for oh, sure. Oh, he fucking looks like Destro, and, he, and he's yeah. jacked. He can he's act. jacked. He's he's a, he can act. He's he's a big guy. Um, he's a, he's the only problem I had with uh, the Deathstroke in Arrow is I felt like he was a little too small. Of yeah, a dude, yeah, new in stature, yeah, but they they have in very, stature, yeah, yeah, he was shorter than yeah. Ali. I was like, this is kind of weird. But uh, Manginello and Manu Bennett kind of ha- share similar. Uh, they kind of look uh, alike. Uh, Joe is just a lot bigger. Yeah, but he's a giant. Dude. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. All right, well, moving on. I got some other news about Justice League, but before we get to that, we got sh- to mention Suicide Squad. Is are we still talking about this fucking yes. movie? You know why? It's killing it at the box office. It has now entered the top 100 highest grossing movies of all time, and it was the top five most profitable movies of the summer. Uh, For all intents and purposes, for Warner Brothers, this is their first legit like hit of their DCEU uh, in terms of profit, I would think. What was the what was the readout on that? Like they made it for what 120? You said well, they said 175 million. It's made uh, this article as of September 4th. It's grossed over 600 million worldwide. I think it's like uh, topping 700 now. It's it's 679 as of this recording. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's good. You know, I mean, top 100 of all time is a good accomplishment. Top five of the summer to me isn't that big of an accomplishment, just because it's been a kind of a weird. Summer. It's been a weird week. week. Yeah. Summer, yes, very weak. The other movies being, uh, well, it's a lot of Disney, uh, Captain America Civil War, Finding Dory, yeah, uh, and Batman v Superman, I think, has got to be up there, uh, Secret Life of Pets, and uh, yeah, so wow, good for Suicide Squad. We'll stop talking about it, but goddamn, it's still making tons of goddamn money, yeah. I mean, it was an okay movie that made a lot of money. Well, you know, and you know, you know what what sign is this sending to Warner Brothers? We'll get into that in a second. Did you see this thing about Mark Hamill and Kevin Conroy? I guess they were at a uh, convention in Canada, Canada's 2016 Fan Expo, mm-hmm. and uh, kind of fucking around with the audience. They someone asked what titles were currently in development, and Conroy turns to ask Hamill. He goes, "What do you think about Hush?" And of course, the crowd goes crazy. And uh, Hamill replies, well, what do you think about a death in the family? Oh, shit. Uh, And why would they mention these two things, first of all, if they weren't actively doing it? And secondly, I don't know if this is a good idea anymore after Killing Joke, guys. I don't know. I kind of cringed initially, which is shocking because I love these adaptations. That's the thing. The Killing Joke had a lot of problems with it. And and some of those problems were Mark Hamill and Kevin Conroy, to be, uh, be honest with you. If you're going to go that dark with something and you have those voices from the cartoon, it just doesn't carry over that well. Yes. 
I don't know. I I don't think Kevin Conroy would know the name Hush unless somebody from like a producer told him that 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 was what they were doing next. Like he, I don't think he knows. So they were fed. They're they're probably working on this because uh, they you're right. You're right. They wouldn't know. Yeah, like you think Kevin Conroy's reading Hush. Now you know, and I would be okay with keeping Conroy. It's really Mark Hamill that, like, if look, if you want to keep those guys and the Bruce Tim look, just do a, something like Mask of the Phantasm. Do a new movie in that universe. That would be awesome. I would love to see that. I kind of want to see some new voices. Give it some uh, a different edge. If you're gonna do these, uh, you know, seminal works. And I, yeah, it's just the voicing. The voicing makes me. Uh, the, the voice acting has to be like almost transparent. Like you, you, you can't notice it. Like if you notice it too much, you know, you're in a cartoon and then it loses all of its its value. Anthony comment. Yes. So I would have been more confident in uh, Hush and Death in the Family if they never released Killing Joke. But after they completely botched the killing joke in general and adding that weird storyline where Barbara is just a victim, a needy victim with a unnecessary. Sitcom. Yes. Yeah. And a 90s sitcom gay guy as yes, her best just friend. A lot of bad, weird writing. Yeah. So after that, I don't have as much faith in DC animated films, which is kind of a uh, disappointing because DC animated films up until that point haven't been horrible. And some of them, in some cases have been really good. Uh, a really good film has been, uh, Batman under the red hood. And that's another one of my kind of weird issues with death. If they do death in the family is they used Batman in the red hood. They already filmed the scene where Batman or Joker kills Jason Todd Robin on screen with a crowbar. Ah, right. So then, in the beginning, right in the beginning. So then now you're going to have this scene repeated again in a separate film. I don't know why you, I don't know why you would do that. Like that's already a moment that they've put in animation. Now you're going to put that same moment in a different animation? Well, look, they've showed us his fucking Batman's origin how many times on film already? Like 12? Yeah, yeah <laughs> I guess. That's well, a good point. That's a good point. But I mean, the story of Death in the Family is, I don't really think it's that compelling. No. I mean, it's the Joker. He's running off to like uh, everybody and Jason finds his mom. Yeah, right. You know, it's just like a weird ass story. I don't know if you want to tell that story. I don't think and, it's going to be good to watch. And, yeah, and it's similar, sort of similar to Killing Joke, not as dark in that the implied maybe rape and like torturing of uh, Jim Gordon with the naked pictures. But it's another one of those storylines where it ends and it's Jason Todd Robin dead. And it's like, what's what's going to come of this? Like what, what else can you really tell? Like you'd have to add on some more stuff. It, it may fall flat. Just like just telling the killing joke. The it's, only it's a, reason I would do this is to illustrate Jason Todd because everybody knows Dick Grayson and who right. he is. And, and it's a good moment to introduce Jason Todd and maybe even bring in Tim Drake and do an origin story. There you could, you know, they could, they do these things where they combine things into the story, you know, like what they did with this killing joke, they made a different story with Batgirl, which I didn't like, but they could use this as a springboard to bring Tim Drake in and kind of do like a big Robin piece. Well, would it also, but would it ruin it? What if they use this? Like, cause then if you're going to kill Jason Todd, then you got to explain how he comes back to life and becomes the red hood. Now I no, can see well, them. If they do that, then it's under the red hood all over again. Then I could see them. What happened between that and under the red hood? But they already show that. So yeah, it's a little confusing. And Hush though is a great kind of detective noir storyline where you're trying to guess who the bad guy is. You know, the whole time. I would do the one with when Batman dies. That's what I would do. Either Nightfall. Oh, where he breaks his back. Back. Or breaking. I would do. Or I would do the one where he, where he actually dies and, and Robin has to be Batman. And then right, and he has to where he's uh, Grant Morrison's where he has to work his way through time. Back. Yeah, that would be cool. Not. I wouldn't even do the Batman working his way through time because then that takes the focus out of the story. Right. On what it Maybe should he's be missing. Yeah. yeah. Where it's more I, the dynamic of Dick Grayson finally becoming Batman. That would be cool. Oh, that would be neat. Yeah, I go to see that. But you and know, then Damian Wayne, and then Damian Wayne being the basically the bratty child, and Dick Grayson being the the father figure, sort of. And they've already established Damian in the the cartoon universe. Right. Uh, and you know, the the most shocking thing was like this should have excited me, but like you guys, because I loved, I even loved the Dark Knight two parter, uh, Batman Year One. They did a great job with those. And then I was like, this should have really got me like geek boner. But instead I was like, uh, I don't know. I don't know. After the last,
last one. I don't know. So I just think that the Killing Joke works because of the artwork. I think the artwork is just so yeah. it great. works on page way better. Yeah, it's just as a, p- a piece of art, it's great because it's just so well rendered and it's the most like well rendered Joker that we've ever had. It's iconic. Like all of those images in that book are iconic Joker images of him with his hand on his head. Yeah. You know, those things, you can't repeat them in like cell animation. No. It just doesn't happen. No. And that's why I love like the beauty of it being a one shot where, it, you know, the, Brian Boland didn't have the strains of working on a monthly comic book. He could take his time and really put a lot of artistry and craft into it. And uh, and it's not long. So, uh, you know, each page is special in that in that thing. That was his opportunity to just carve out the Joker in like a way that he's never been drawn before. So it's kind of like not something that you want to animate. It's not about the story, really. It's not about, you know, the 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 storytelling. It's really just about the visual, I think, more than anything. You're right. He was like the most realistically rendered Joker, you know, you had seen on on in the pages. It was well, iconic. I would, I would also add in, though, I, I wouldn't com- I don't completely agree with that in that. I think, yes, the art was very iconic. But the storyline of the Joker and it being one bad day, yeah, that one bad day can make anybody um, just like the Joker. And then the the storyline of Jim Gordon experiencing his one bad day and still being like, no, I want it done by the book. Yeah. I think that's a very powerful moment for a lot of those, those both of those characters and even Batman. So I think that, but it's just that the fact that that storyline is so short, in my opinion, yes. is why. Yeah, I mean, you can't it, really put that on the film. thought. The thought and the idea is great, but it doesn't have enough length. Right. To actually, you know, really give it some meat. Hush is pretty long. That was, was that Hush like 12, is long. 12 issues. So that's I'm, I'm looking old. at Death in the Family. I, for, I totally forgot this storyline. It was, remember, it was in the desert. They go yeah. and uh, his mom. Well, now I'm reading it, but yeah. I, I rem- now I'm remembering that the Robin's death is actually like halfway through the book. Right. And then there's more. And, and really, and then the, there's more that isn't that cool. And actually. that's, and it's only famous because people called in and voted to kill Jason Todd. Like, you're right. right. Maybe the story does not hold up. Like, I can think of a bunch of different things that has happened in Batman lore that's been interesting, like the Nightfall with Azrael. Yeah, way more interesting than the death in the family. You have, you know, the fact, the one where, um, you know, the KG Beast was running around. Yeah. And, or when the time where he had, where he, where he went to Ra's al Ghul and he gave birth to Damien or, or, you know. Oh yeah. Son of the demon. The Son of the Italia. demon. Great. Uh, yeah. Graphic novel. Did you ever rem- read the cult Batman and Jason Todd? I remember the cover. Wasn't oh, it like a God. sewer? Like there was a sewer cover on the cover and in yeah, Batman's they, hand. I heard there that was, was a good. religious cult and bat. It was like this crazy bat shit cult. And it was like a satanic thing. And Batman had to go in and rescue somebody from a cult and fucking Dick Grace, it's it's drawn by Bernie Wrightson, which was yeah. a, it's amazing. Long but, ear Batman. Yeah, but uh, but Jason Todd is fucking like a badass in this. He's like no, no holds barred. Wait, Dick Grayson or Jason Todd? Jason Todd. I said Dick Grayson by accident. Oh, okay, it's Jason Todd. Todd is badass. Yeah. Okay, and you see how unhinged he is. It's, it's that's a, a good one. Yeah, that one uh, I've seen on like best Batman stories. Well, look, they're gonna do Hush. They're probably gonna do Death in the Family. And it's probably gonna be flat. I think death in the just getting back to death in the family real quick. That moment where Robin dies, it's it's literally just a moment, and I don't know if the storyline surrounding that moment is all that compelling. It's literally just a moment. In they're literally making they would be making an animated film based off just a moment. There's no storyline there. Yep. The only storyline is uh, Jason Todd's overzealousness, but that's how long is that gonna last? Like that's not. Uh, animated film length storyline. And it's going to be Batman going, look, I can't kill the Joker, even though he killed Jason Todd. I have to capture him, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, nope. and, and we saw that storyline in Under the Red Hood. Yeah. So Don't that's do that why one. It's weird. What well, was good in that movie? It's just, it's not good if you repeat I the think, same You know shit. what I think happened? What's, what's, I think what some of this promoting this is the fact that they did the Fathom events and they made a couple million dollars on kind of a well-known book ad- adaptation. So now they're looking for more of these storylines that everybody knows that people will come out to see despite the quality. But how about you take some time and and put some quality in it this time and don't just fucking throw it together. To well, it has familiar. to be. It's not even the, the quality. It's the right storyline. Like we've said here, The Killing Joke is, might have not just ever been appropriate for a animated fe- feature-length film. 
And I know it's unpopular uh, opinion, but how about we get someone else besides Conroy and Hamill? I get it. They got fans. They've had, they've done. There's plenty of them. I wanted to hear some new people. I want to hear some new takes. Well, they've had new takes too. That's the weird thing is they, if you watch all the animated films, there's been different guys have played. Yeah, there's the different guys. Peter Weller, it. Ben McKenzie. Yeah, ba- ba- there's been different guys that have done Batman, and they've done most of them have done a pretty good job. So we could. Yeah, I don't think it took away from it. No, yeah. no, not at all. Uh, anyways, moving on. So in the same Wall Street Journal article, uh, Jeff Johns gave where he revealed that Joe Mangio is officially cast as Deathstroke. He talks a lot about the adjustments they're making on Justice League. And on the response from the fans and how it's uh, he's actually listening to it and helping to shape the future of this. And a lot of it's pretty good. He has said mistakenly in the past, I think the studio has said, oh, DC films are gritty and dark. And that's what makes them different. That couldn't be more wrong. It's a hopeful and optimistic view of life. Even Batman has a glimmer of that in him. If he didn't think he'd make tomorrow better, he'd stopped. So he's again, he's pushing this. We're going to be hopeful. We're going to be optimistic. He said stuff like they're going to talk about. It's kind of funny. Like Batman vs Superman dealt with why Man of Steel was so destructive and violent. And now Justice League is going to deal with why Batman in Batman v Superman was so violent and murderous. Uh, I don't know. It's just funny. That's knee jerky. Right. How do they not know what the right thing to do is? It's so stupid. But they're like, now they're going the polar opposite direction now. Pretty much. He's also said, here's what the best it's part. Crazy. Here's the best part, though. Jeff John said the film will have fewer of Zack Snyder's controversial flourishes, like the apocalyptic dream sequence from Don Justice, and will focus on the actual plot of the film at hand. Oh, shit. What a novel idea, everybody. I agree with that. I agree with Jesus that. Jesus Christ. That's a great, but wh- why is it taking so long? Uh, to figure this out. You're right, Ruggs. Anthony, comment? <laughs> That's great that uh, Jeff Johns is saying that, but it's, isn't this kind of weird that like the executive director or whatever his title is, is basically saying, yeah, Zack Snyder kind of sucks at some of these things, like pu- publicly calling him out. Yeah. Like I know that as fans, that's what we want, but as a company, is that sort of the company you want to direct for when they're like, yeah, we're publicly going to put the reins on our director. Like we're going to publicly tell everybody that Hey, our direct, like, we don't really believe in wow, our director. That is kind of shitty. I didn't even think Isn't about it from, from the other side. Because I'm like, yeah, no more Zack Snyder. We don't I mean, that's Jeff what Jones. we want to hear as right. fans. But as someone that, if I was Zack Snyder, if I was a director going to direct a DC film, would I want a guy above me being like, yeah, you know, he's not that great at some of this stuff, so we're going <laughs> to put the reins on him. I think he hurt his feelings. I think Jeff Johns hurt Zack Snyder's feelings. I just think it's weird. I think it's weird that there, there's public criticism of their their own people. It's, I mean, it's a little bit still this knee jerk reactionary. They just say things and then have yeah, to fix sucks. what they said. You, you can say that same thing without ever having Zack Snyder's name be invoked or look. All implied. he said, I mean, he's just saying there's yeah. I mean, he's saying there's going to be less controversial Zack Snyder style. I don't know. That's I'm glad. Good. He's, yeah, I'm glad he's saying it. I'm glad he's saying it plainly, too. I'm glad he's not trying to disguise it. But, I mean, you know, it's like uh, they doubled down on this shit after Man of Steel. They knew they were making a mistake. Like, it's not like it was like a shocker. Like, oh, we didn't know we were doing it wrong. They knew. Everybody was like, no, don't do this. And then they did it anyway. I mean, I think they keep falling back to that thing where they're like, no, the second movie is supposed to be the dark one. And the third one is going to be the bright one. But whatever. That's just fucking backpedaling a little bit, I think, after the fact. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Look, we saw the trailer for Justice League. It has jokes. It has Bruce Wayne smiling. It's got definitely a different tone, uh, you know, already. Did you ever, did you guys see that uh, video I posted in the Jock and Nerd community page on Facebook? Yes. Um, where Zack Snyder's main flaw is that he focuses on moments. Moments versus scenes. Yes, I love that. And uh, that is kind of, that's, he hit the nail right on the head. Yeah. And the basic gist was Zack Snyder. For anyone that hasn't seen it, Zack Snyder, his whole directing style is based on creating these iconic moments that, you know, could ever forever be frozen and that you'll remember. But he focuses so much on moments that he doesn't leave any time for a person to sink into the characters and actually feel like they're in this whatever setting he's at. His He doesn't focus on settings and letting people just breathe a little bit. Everything just is kind of frenetic and moving to the next moment. So there's no time to actually enjoy a moment. 
So this movie and the video basically said too that the problem isn't jokes. Like he, this movie could have a, a million jokes, but if he if he does the same exact thing where he's focusing on just creating iconic moments, then yeah. the story is still going to suck. And that's the problem with his style. It's still his style. You're absolutely right. There's no establishing shots. There's nothing tying the moments together. They don't feel earned. It just becomes one giant montage for two and a half hours. Like it just jumps to the, the money shots. Right. No, there's no rest. There's no, you know, pacing. There's no dynamics. I, that video nailed it, dude. He nailed it. It's very like nineties splash page esque. It's a music video. You know, it's a very music it's video. video. Or yeah, like splash, splash page, page comic book, splash page. Absolutely. Which is, but the easy fix to that is hook him up with a guy who can tie these moments together in character and story. Like that's not hard. You, you know, you know, his strength just don't, I guess they're starting to finally reel it in and figure out what his strength is. And, but and help it's him. the script though. Yeah. I, mean, yeah. I mean, he's working from a script unless he's, he's got carte blanche to just throw things away as he feels like it. And concentrate on shit that he likes. I hope that's not the case. Well, I think it's a lot of the times too. I think writers, and I talked to my friend Chris Sotello, who's been on the show. Um, he says writers usually are focused on story, but when the director gets a hold of a script, they're like, "What? What? Where can I put my stamp on this?" Yeah. So Zack Snyder is looking at these scripts, and maybe these scripts are poor, probably because he's made two poor films. So, but you know, maybe he's looking at these scripts and going, "All right, where am I going to put my stamp?" All right moment here this moments? is going to be a big moment like, yeah. I mean, because a director's whole thought process is the story it's everything it's all right where's the light going to be how am i going to shoot this how can i make this am i going to shoot it from above so that it looks epic like am i going to shoot it from below like everything is all about creating this style and moments so i think directors a lot of the times a lot of directors not only snyder get they get focused on the moments because they want to put their stamp on a film Whereas writers are just focused on story. But then, like, I, maybe it's Goyer's fault because he's worked with Snyder more than one occasion. Maybe I think it's a it's a combination. I could kind of see Goyer being like, look, I, he likes moments. I'm going to write a whole movie full of moments because sure. I know he'll deliver. And so now it's just making it worse. Yeah, very possible. Look, there's no David as Goyer on Justice League. So hopefully the writing, it all starts with the writing. You guys are absolutely right. It has to start with the writing uh, for anything to be good. Absolutely. Moving on to the MCU. Hey, you guys remember Happy Hogan? John, yeah, he was uh, the driver. John Favreau as uh, Tony Stark's driver. Uh, well, he's returning. He'll be appearing in Spider-Man Homecoming. Oh, shit. I imagine uh, he'll be like be driving the limo. Like Tony Stark's going to send a limo to yep. Peter Parker. Yep, exactly. Exactly. Okay. It's, there you Where's go. For you? You. There's that one scene. Print, cut. Moving on. Uh, well, also, I like, I've always liked Happy Hogan. Yeah, Happy Hogan's films. great. When we haven't seen him since like Iron Man two, Iron Man three. He got he's his, got, he got really his, fat too. Yeah. yeah, he got blown up by uh by one of the uh, extremist soldiers by accident. Oh, that's right. Yeah, uh, he's very happy eating lots of donuts. I don't know. Ah, uh, here's another uh, uh, shocking addition. Uh, pun intended to Spider Man Homecoming. Uh, oh, we yeah. have uh, set photos. Our first look at Bo Keem Woodbine, maybe as the shocker. I mean, is that be... real or is that fake? I've heard that two different conflicting things that it's real and it's fake. Really? I haven't. Uh, I haven't seen anything that said it's fake. It looks it runs very easily um, fooled. I, I'm. I'm. He I am. Very... Godzilla versus yeah. King Kong. That was uh, clearly uh, a oh fake Photoshop. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't do that on the show, like an asshole. Look, this it looks is on comicbook.com, this... which is a Somewhat credible yeah. site. And the, the the suit in this Instagram, it's kind of paying an homage to like, it's got the yellow uh, arms and, and hood mask. And he's got these gauntlets on his arm uh, and he's got goggles. It's kind of like uh, the classic looking shocker. And uh, I don't know. I heard that instead of like, it's like concussive, concussive punches that he can emit out of his thing. And we also know in the movie, like the tinkerer. So there's the tinkerer and the vulture and the tinkerer is going to help the shocker. Uh, there's already three villains. Does, does, he do, does he do the hand thing? <laughs> Not like that shocker. Thing? No, that's no. a different shocker. That's okay. a very, it's a very different sexy shocker. <laughs> so look, what for what it's worth, this is what the shocker may or may not look like. If this is real at all. Uh, let's move on to uh, Doctor Strange. We had a couple of dates and uh, info revealed. We know how long the movie is going to be. Uh, runtime, 130 minutes. 
Uh, so nice. That's a nice runtime. Yeah, it's not too too long. 130? Yeah, just over two hours, 210. 210 it's pretty yeah. good. Uh, and also, again, the UK lucky bastards you are, listener, if you're in the UK, you get to see the movie uh, 10 days early. This movie is coming out in the UK. Uh, it, it was coming out the October 28th of this year. They moved it up to October 24th. Uh, and then it's going to open stateside November 4th. 10 days later. I mean, this isn't unusual. They've done this before with United Kingdom getting yeah. uh, the film first, but I think it also speaks to the confidence they have in their films in that they think that they will get positive press internationally and it won't, it'll just buoy more um, people to watch it here in America. Yeah. And they can, I mean, this international market increasingly, you know, we talk about China and how these, these markets are, are, are just as important as uh, the U S markets. And then you can see, you know, they'll have reviews, but I just, you, I'm going to have to not look at like social media for 10 days while they get to fucking watch this movie and talk about it. I don't like that. I mean, you well, you already know what's going to happen Imran. It's not like it's a shock. That's true. It is the, your basic, uh, Dr. Strange origin, yeah, little yeah. magic thing. Not a fucking millennial, dude. What are you acting like a little baby for? I want to you, see you, you now. You've lived, you've <laughs> lived through an era where you didn't have to have, to have social media and you had to wait. That's, yeah. That's, you're that's used true. to it. You're not me. What are you acting like a millennial for? Dude, I I, I grew oh, up. I got to stay away from social media. You know, what's funny. It's like oh. when I was in my teens, I would read the fucking novelizations of these movies before the movie even came out. I was like, I'm spoiling the whole movie. I'm reading the novel. That was always fun. Because there was always more bits. Like I read the so Batman. That guy. I was totally that guy. I was. I would read. I read Batman eighty nine. The novel had like a whole bunch of more stuff in it than the movie did. It was actually pretty good. Oh. If that was like the yeah, novel. I had that too. Yeah, the novelizations always have uh, more. Yeah, kind of cool. Yeah, and like so, is that you think that stuff is like in the script? Was some of that stuff was probably shot, or is that cut before? I think maybe they they do it from one of the cuts before the final cut, probably. Yeah, I love that. It uh, it's uh, it adds. Uh, yeah, in '89 there was a whole bunch of extra shit, and I was like, "Hey, this part's not in the movie. It was in the book." And I, you know, I was 13. I thought everything was gonna be in the movie. So going in, I didn't get to see all the good stuff. Okay. Uh, in other movie news, this guy should get you excited. Two Godzilla pieces of news. We have a U.S. release date. Well, it's like a limited engagement, right? We have like a, a date range. It's like a week. October 11th through 18th, it will have a limited engagement in theaters around the country. Uh, I'll put a link in the show notes uh, to the website where you can buy tickets and find out where it's playing near you. I can't believe there's not one in New York City. There isn't one at all? Like in Manhattan, I would expect. No, but there's not. Where is it in uh, Jersey? There's got to be one near New York. There's there's a couple in Jersey somewhere, and there's a couple in like upstate New York, but I don't think there's one in Manhattan. The movie. What the fuck is that? Like all of Manhattan, nobody loves Godzilla there. You know, I don't get it. Shin Godzilla will screen in more than 440 theaters across the U.S. and Canada. Me and you, Imran, got to go see it. Absolutely, we got to watch it unless I can find it uh, from other means beforehand. No, I'll go see it in the theater. This will be a special. A special trip because Anthony, you and I don't actually go see movies together. Oh, we did the Captain America once. We this saw Captain one. America Winter uh, Soldier, Winter Soldier advanced two or three years ago. So, yeah, advanced screen. We saw it like a month before it came out. That was awesome. That was awesome. We also did stood Imran in line for all, about three hours. What's did that? Imran eat all your popcorn? Did Imran eat your popcorn? I don't eat popcorn. It gets stuck in my teeth. I will eat all your M&Ms. I wish, <laughs> I wish we had a podcast back then. We could have been like, yo, we saw Captain America Winter Soldier a month early. And I would have yeah. just, I would have spoiled it for everybody. Just been an asshole. You, you definitely would have. <laughs> this show would have never been able to make it to air because Marvel would have came and sued our we, fucking We would have got sued. Uh, well, the, I said there was two impo- exciting things for Godzilla. The other exciting thing is there is an English trailer released. Uh, English, loosely using that word English. Did you like this trailer, Anthony? To be honest, I didn't know it was there was an English trailer. Eric, so take a moment, click it, watch it now, everyone. I watched it, and we'll discuss. Talking nerd. All right. So uh, the the first English trailer for Shin Godzilla uh, surprisingly doesn't even have any English in it. Right? There's no English. Nobody's talking. What it does have? Lots of cuts, lots of horns, uh, and lots of cool shots of Godzilla at the end. Anthony, what do you think about this ver- uh, compared to? 
the Japanese trailers. Cool shots of Godzilla. You had one shot of Godzilla. Well, I guess at the, at the end, yeah. That was the only was shot watching, that was worth anything. I was watching Anthony watch it. Like, I was watching every move of his eyes. <laughs> and, and at one point, he made this, like, mouth gesture. Like, it was completely, like, underwhelmed. He was just like, <laughs> ooh. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I could tell like he was like not impressed at all. He was like, okay, cuts, cuts of these guys in meetings. Okay. There, it's like, before. it's like weird cuts too. Like it's first off, it's, I understand that they don't want to show Godzilla because I don't know. They think some of us haven't seen what he looks like. I don't know why. Well, but, they, they don't want us to see what it looks like. Cause it right. looks like shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh but, shit. However, the, the way they cut these Japanese trailers, this was even worse than the ones that were made for Japan audiences. Like, the shots are not interesting. It's just people, quick cuts of people reacting and doing things. But, like, the way the cuts are filmed, and maybe I haven't seen the film, but maybe even the way the movie's filmed, it's very, like, weird indie, like, guys trying new things, like, on the indie scene. The way, like, the overhead shots of, like, hands and, like, up close shot of, like, underneath someone's chin. And like found footage shots and yeah. then like long shot. Like it's weird. I, I just, mean, it's but, not, it's not at all. It's just, it's not exciting. It's more just like the fuck. Why, do, why, so why do they I, think that for like uh, the English speaking world, like they just need a lot of cuts like this thing. There's got to be a 60, 70 edits in this trailer. Every beat, every second it's cutting uh, until the end. Well, that was the concept is that they wanted to take the, I don't even know if I'm saying it right. The Ikafube, um, soundtrack from the original g54 ah. and edit to the that that dirge yeah i like that i like that kind of feel like the music does give it that feel of a, a score from the 50s like the big bombastic horns uh and it seems very traditional I, well as a as as you being a non-godzilla fan that's probably like the most iconic score that is okay ever. Nice. Yeah. yeah so i mean the, the the money shots of course godzilla with the 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 music, the chorus or whatever. Um, that was cool, but everything else sucked. I, you know, some of the horns and the shot, it gave me a little bit of like a Hitchcockian feel also with, or like a Kubrick with like quiet and then loud horns, uh, kind of almost jarring and screechy, you know, kind of thing. So it's interesting though, your perspective on it, seeing as you're not the yeah. Godzilla. That, yeah. that, that, that is kind of the intent back then ah. with that score. Yeah. So I, you know, it got me, uh, uh, I th- it seemed to get a lot of people excited uh, well, Godzilla fans mostly. Well, I've I've seen a lot of the the fanboys like just jizzing in their pants at this thing because of that. Because you know what? Whenever you put something that's from the original movie, you know that gets everybody's pants wet. Like everybody, like just immediately, like it's nostalgic. You know, it's like if you were to hear like the Spider Man theme from like when you were a kid, like in Spider Man, you're like, oh, that's cool. Like, you know. So it's the same. So you and you're talking specifically about the roar at the end, right? So they're playing up on the nostalgia of the whole no, everything, the whole yeah. score. Oh, the whole score, all the music. I see. Well, yeah. kind of smart. It's kind of smart. All right. Well, yeah, we'll go see it. I'm dying to uh, see it, and we'll do a review episode. Uh, moving on, guys. Uh, Daniel Craig. I thought this was pretty fucking uh, incredible. Daniel Craig has been offered a hundred and fifty million dollars. For a blowjob. No, for two more <laughs> James Bond movies. Oh, shit. Do you think Daniel Craig is worth $75 million a movie to play James Bond? This is uh, wild. Is it a three-picture deal or a two-picture? So it's two. It says just two more. I heard something about they want to do two more, and then they want to reboot it again with a, a young, even younger James Bond. I don't know why they... Uh... They're offering this much money to to. That's crazy. Craig. Yeah, it, the last movie, S- Spectre, um, didn't perform as well at the box office or with critics. Did it cost a lot film. though? I don't. I don't know what it costed. I because like the up. marquee value of James Bond is pretty big. That's true. And they don't necessarily have to do effects and shit. It's not like they're doing like a, uh, you know, Incredible Hulk and shit. They're not doing like CG. They're probably doing a little bit of that for certain like destruction effects, but a lot of it's him running around. Well, Skyfall, here I got you. Yeah. Skyfall was a two hundred million dollar production budget. Jesus. Whoa. <laughs> and that's probably just salaries. Yeah. And Spectre, two forty five. Holy shit. Yeah. Whoa. And that made domestically only two hundred. 
Look, if you give Daniel Craig $150 million, you're going to have 20 bucks left to produce two movies. Like, I yeah. don't think this is a good idea. And has anybody been paid? That would make it the highest fucking gig ever for an actor. And, and the whole not. appeal, a lot of the appeal for people with Bond is How okay, that? who's the next guy in the role? Like, who's, yeah. the next, who's the next Bond? That's insane. But good for Craig if he can, if he wants to do it. Are you fucking kidding me? That two hundred and fifty million dollars those movies? Why yeah, does it man. cost so much? It's got to be salaries. It's got to be salaries, dude. Look, Deadpool showed us you can make a movie on the cheap and make a lot of money, and it's still pretty good. It's, it's got to be crazy. salaries. Uh, but uh, I see. I don't. I don't know if he's worth it. But that's that is an insane amount of money. Uh, finally, in movie talk. Uh, the Crow reboot, which we kind of hinted at uh, last week, was it? We talked about Jason Momoa. Yeah. Uh, it's going to uh, start filming in January, uh, which is awesome. So I, I just. Uh, I heard that James Obar is involved in this. Movie. Yeah, this time. I kind of like this. It's uh, it's I get what do you it's not a reboot, I guess. I don't know what you call it. It's just another ad- adaptation. They're going to try to stick closer to the comic book. And uh, and it's possibly going to be mo- darker and even more violent than the original. I, I don't know how you can do that with Jason Momoa, though. He's just a, such a huge guy. It does it. I don't know. It's weird. I'm thinking. Uh, they think you're, you think they're going to do the exact the crow the not the graphic novel? Yes. Yes. That's what I'm. Uh, that's I what I'm. Hearing. I don't really think that, but I, if they do that, that's cool. There's some fan art. Uh, I think he would look cool, but uh, yeah, he said they're saying it's going to be a literal page for page adaptation of the book, you know, and we know how trendy those things are these days. So, wow. It's like if you ever read The Crow, The Crow is very effeminate in that book. It is like because he's 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 broken. He's like he's like he's the masculinity is gone from him in a way because he wasn't able to protect his wife. And so it, he embodies that. And as the book progresses, he becomes more masculine. He starts you out very in like drawing. Uh, he yeah. starts out like wraith like and skinny and, and gangly a little bit. Right. Yeah. I mean, the book has weird metaphors. It's got like horses, talking birds, uh, crazy imagery. Have and you read The Crow, Anthony? I have not. No, you should check it out. It's pretty good. I don't know if you'll get it because it's from our time. You know, it's from the, it, it, it is a product of that kind of time, but I mean, he might get it and go like, this is too much bullshit. This is like some gobbledygook, but like, I, <laughs> I really, I really love it. Like, I mean, it was the time of the crow came out at kind of the same time as Sandman. Wow. Okay. And Sandman was very like goth, like it was like ethereal. It was spiritual. It was, it was magic filled and stuff like that. And the crow even though it, it was in that gothic vein, it was full of like this gothic punk, um, all of these references and stuff like that. Um, and it was very like crazily illustrated. Like you could see the same guy drew the whole book, but it started to grow as you got to the end of the book. He started to adapt this like more realistic s- style. He got better. Yeah, you yeah. can see him get better. You can see him grow. Yeah, it's crazy. For me, this movie, like it came out in 94, and it also, like you said, it's very goth emo, but it also just it reminds me of discovering like grunge rock of the time. You know, it kind of tapped into that whole vein. Uh the soundtrack. Remember how awesome the soundtrack was for the fucking crow? Oh, it was great. Uh, I, what are they gonna do? They're gonna go and make a rap soundtrack with this? <laughs> it's not you can't do that. Like the crow is the goth is about goth and punk. It, it, it it's it's the it's the like the touchstone for that whole movement. Yeah, well, as a millennial, I can tell you, goth and punk, definitely not in right now. Yeah, not a thing. Yeah, it's not of this time, and it like in the nineties, it was the perfect time for it. So, uh, and it's not a thing that I don't I don't know. Maybe it will be, but it's not a thing that like. Like we look back at like the cowboy era as like a fond thing, or like the the disco era, or like the punk rock, or the rebellion to disco. Like those are all eras that I look like I think of, and I'm like, oh, I could see a time period piece about that, and it appealing to me. Goth and punk or whatever, not really yet. Yeah, the, so I can't see them doing a page for page adaptation. I just don't see it. Uh, give it another 20 years and it'll be in style. It'll, again. Be, it'll be in. <laughs> Listen, if you have the balls to make that movie, kudos, because I I, I think it's great when you do something that you don't think is going to be popular and just say, fuck it. But like, yeah, I don't think they're going to go for it, though. The suits are not going to go for it. 
I mean, I I like that Obar is involved. He's also heavily going to be involved in the production of the reboot and the control of the soundtrack. So it'll be interesting to see what kind of uh, properties and licenses he gets. He says it's going to be good. It's going to be really good. And it's going to be closer to Taxi Driver than to John Woo. The violence is supposed to be ugly. I'm very happy with everything. So uh, we'll see if he can tap into uh, that the same kind of... Uh, goth emo vigilante whatever retribution vengeance uh of the character yeah. i also i saw i watched the clip of that movie again brandon lee would have made a really good joker also he was very joker-esque in that role yeah uh in the in the you know in the scenes where he's like everybody's dead they just don't know it yet yeah <laughs> i haven't seen the film so i can't comment you should see it it's pretty good read the oh book too the book's good I think millennials, though. I think you're right, Rugs. I think uh, it won't. It, you listen. It, I, it I, might not hold up. <laughs> listen, God. it was of its time. Yes. It was something that that spurned a whole movement, but I don't think it carries weight now. I love the movie, though. I still think it's a masterpiece. Yeah, he was very good at it. All right, moving on to some TV news. Stephen Amell, uh, who plays the Arrow, uh, really I, wants. I, I don't even know why this is in the news, but all right, go ahead. I'll tell you why. He really wants to compete. On American Ninja Warrior. Oh shit! Dude, are, I, we, are we wait before you even go ahead? Are we really discussing actors' hobbies right now? I love American Ninja Warrior. I only put this in here because if you've been watching the season, there the stunt woman from Supergirl. Her name is Jesse Graff. She's fucking badass. She's been killing it this season and getting through the stages. She's like the first girl to complete a lot of these, and she wears yeah, she badass. Dude, I saw it. She, she's amazing, and she wears like. Supergirl and Wonder Woman uh, clothes when she's doing it. And she's Melissa Bemois' uh, stunt woman on the show, but she's fucking amazing. But I would I would like to see if Amel can actually do this because he looks in shape. You see him do the salmon ladder, but I want to see him run through the whole thing. It's fucking harder than it looks. Yeah, course, well, it's quite difficult. Yes. I don't, I, think, just, I, don't think, I don't think anyone looks at that and goes... That looks easy. <laughs> no, I would just like him to act better. <laughs> how about that? Yeah. How about you so focus that. on just acting better, motherfucker? Did I tell you I saw the Ninja Turtles movie and he was horrible in it? You know what? I started. I started watching it uh, last night. I got to the first thirteen minutes. It was all right. I was, was like, horrible, this is kind huh? of fun. Horrible? No, the movie wasn't horrible. I would no, say it was. Well. Yeah, Mel's just not. I mean, he was miscast. I'll put it that way. He was just okay. miscast. He's pretty cheesy in his role too. Yeah, it, I mean, the acting isn't great, but I mean, that's not that does that's a role for a New Yorker. Yeah, and you yeah. got Stephen a- 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 Mel, who's from like he sounds like he's from uh, you know I don't know, Illinois or something. Plus, they changed the <laughs> character. They changed the character a little bit. Like he works for the 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 police or the city. Instead of being like a vigilante or some shit, I don't know. Yeah, it's not Casey Jones. It's, it's not, not. It's not the same Casey. At least Cody is. That, now there's a Casey Jones. Yeah, it is. He's he was Stephen perfect. Amell, Toronto, Canada. He's a Canadian. Yeah, that's not gonna work. <laughs> Casey, he's like, I, he's, there's a line. He's like, I, this is my city. I'm like, no, it's not. <laughs> You're not. It's not your city. Sounds like a whiny right. fucking. Yeah, Casey Jones is a dirty like New Yorker, a fucking from the alleys of the streets, man. I know who Casey Jones is, and that's I do not think of Stephen Amell when no. I think of Casey. He didn't Jones. Even bother like, like it, long-haired guy, yeah. like even like, the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles film. Ilias Granted, Cody, that was yeah, him. that guy, that guy, perfect. He was looked, perfect. Looked a lot like him. They didn't, Amell didn't even bother like growing his hair out or a wig no, or nothing. nothing. They, they should have put the they should have put the bullshit arrow wig on. Yeah, him. you have a shitty wig. You wear it on the show all the time. Put it on. <laughs> What are you doing? I, I kind of want to watch the rest of the movie. I watched the first 15 minutes. It seemed like fun. I was like, this is kind of fun. It was, you know, it was a stupid, it's a stupid movie, but like it's got ninja stuff in it and yeah. it's got ninja turtles in it and it's a ninja turtle movie. And I didn't oh. even see the first one. And I'm like, fuck it. I'm just going to watch the second one. I don't really they care. Eat, they eat pizza. They have nunchucks. You know, it's all there. A lot of CGI. Uh, moving on to something that's good, guys. Early reviews for uh, Luke Cage on Netflix popping up. All over the internet. It comes out September 30th. Every goddamn review is pretty much saying the same thing. This is the best thing Marvel has to offer yet. Like, I I cannot wait. I'm hoping this is true. I'm I'm psyched. You know, media sites have gotten the first seven episodes. I don't know why we can't get the first seven episodes. Hello? 
Uh, I know why nobody's listening. Uh, but, but no, it's because they, well, definitely that's that is the number one reason. I, I, but number two, you fully admitted that if we got an early screening right. of a show, that you would spoil everything. I did, I did say that, didn't I? Yeah, I'd probably. Uh, we'll I, cut that out in post. We'll <laughs> cut it. It'll be fine. I would be able to uh, control myself. Oh my god, you know what happens in episode seven? But look, everyone is just raving about this thing. Uh, I can't. I cannot wait. The reviews have been really good, and they they say that. Uh, Cottonmouth, uh, by play by Marsala. What's oh, ever? Yeah, it's like Marsala Ali. Yeah, they're yeah. saying he's up there with Kingpin and and Kilgrave. And the thing that makes him stand out is Cottonmouth isn't as well known a character as Purple Purple Man and, yeah. uh, and Kingpin. Kingpin. So yeah. he's able to put his own spin on it, and he's still able to to hold stand with all those other villains. I love how the Netflix shows are starting to bring us some of the best villains in the MCU, and even surpass like the movies, but. Uh, I wish they didn't have to kill Kilgrave, you know, in flashbacks, he could still be effect effectual. Uh, also Alfrey Woodard, she's playing a bad guy in this and she's always fucking she great. She's a uh, Cottonmouth's cousin. So ah, he's, uh, his name like is Mahersha Mahershala Ali. And, uh, he's been in some shit. Is he, uh, yeah. house of cards? Oh, he was in house of cards. I wonder yeah. if he'll have little hunger little games, predators pointy teeth like in the comic book probably not <laughs> probably you might have something going september on september 30th gang i'm, uh, I'm quite pumped i'm very, very pumped yeah. for it oh, it's gonna be I'm great very pumped it seems like they're uh tackling a lot of issues within the african-american community in there and i like the the idea of the t t names of the episodes being gangstar songs. Yeah, yeah i heard the soundtrack is, is really amazing and they work in musical performances really well it being in harlem and the, harlem. the real question is because they've had three of these now netflix shows two yes. daredevils one jessica owns and all the reviews for the first seven epi episodes have been great just because that's all we get it's can this show maintain that momentum from seven episodes to all 13 because it seems like all three of these shows kind of lost momentum towards the end but they seem to get better in how they use their 13 episodes. You know, I thought they did it really well in Daredevil season two in terms of like four episode arc, four episode arc. And then it kind of fucking fell apart towards the end. But they're starting to look at it as like chapters, you know. Yeah. Uh, so September 30th. Now, if you can't wait until September 30th, I found something else cool coming out on Netflix on the 16th of September. It's a movie starring Robbie Amell, who plays Firestorm. And Hellcat, Rachel Taylor from Jessica Jones. This movie's called ARC, A-R-Q. And it's written and directed by Tony Elliott of Orphan Black fame. It's a sci-fi time loop movie. It's kind of oh. like an Edge of Tomorrow uh, mixed with Groundhog's Day, uh, where Robbie Amell and Rachel Taylor, well, here's the official synopsis. They're reliving the same day over and over again. And getting shot by people. It says here, in a dystopian future, an engineer trapped in a house and surrounded by a mysterious gang of masked intruders must protect the technology that could deliver unlimited energy and end the wars that have been have consumed the world. So I think the arc is this technology and it's causing time to loop and they got to figure out. I love fucking time loop movies and time travel movies. So it's an original Netflix film uh, and it's got uh, comic book uh, people in it. So I'm um, check it out September 16th. So it's just a movie. It's just a movie. It's not a yeah, series. That's cool. Yeah. I don't think I can make a series out of it. So I was no, like, okay, yeah, it's no, yeah, no. At first, I was worried like the series would get repetitive. Uh, but link in the show notes, jogginerd.com slash one two six ARQ arc. Finally, we have some jock news. Finally, Anthony, this we're finally is the, talking about stuff that actually matters. Here's the end of our news segment, and then we'll <laughs> talk about Agents of Shield in a little bit. What matters, Anthony, to you in the jock world right now? Hit us. Hit us. Hit us. It's not uh, Stephen Amell competing on Ninja Warrior. No, that's, sure. that's pretty no. jocky. And it's not <laughs> Robbie Amell in some fucking Netflix film. That's for sure. Um, uh, no, I mean, were you guys are you guys familiar with CM Punk? Yeah, he's from Chicago, right? That's not what he's known for, Ron. What the fuck? That's what I know him for. <laughs> CM Punk uh, is a professional wrestler in the WWE or oh, was. So he's an um, actor. Yeah. He's so he's yeah. an actor in sports entertainment, sports entertainer is what they call him. Yeah. Uh, whatever. <laughs> um, he was like the WWE champ or whatever. And two or three years ago, he quit and he said, Hey, I want to compete in Miss martial arts. The UFC signed him very controversial signing because he has absolutely no experience whatsoever in combat sports. Huh. 
and he is debuting this Saturday. Is this the first uh, wrestling dude to come over? No, not the first. I mean, Brock Lesnar was the most famous one prior to this, but Brock Lesnar was an actual athlete, actually had a fight under his belt and was a national champion uh, wrestler, collegiate wrestler, not not prof- not fake wrestling. So, but the, oh, that's what I'm saying. Is this the first for all, you know to not, for all? I don't know what words to use. Is this the first fake wrestler to come over to the UFC without any combat training in this situation? Yes. Wow. To the UFC, yes. There's been fake wrestlers that have come to MMA and competed in smaller shows. Yeah. But the UFC is supposed to be the the pinnacle, and he's basically skipped the line. And ah, uh, so is he training? What do you think? Is he going to get hurt? <laughs> Can he handle I, this? I hope he gets his ass beat. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking hope he gets cream. I mean, I can't imagine he's going to come out and just win his first I, fight. I, I never liked CM Punk. No? So, oh, no. Okay. It's a little bit of a punk. Nah, what was his, like what was his, like, what was his shtick uh, in the he, WWE? He was this guy. He was a wrestler. I mean, he's like not the most athletic guy, but he's uh, this wrestler that is tatted up from Chicago. His whole thing is straight edge. So he doesn't drink. He doesn't smoke. He doesn't do Boo! Drugs. Boo! <laughs> and and he's one of those guys that like it was just great on the mic and a good good wrestler, um, like you know he's good a good promos. showman. Yeah, I mean yeah, he's, good showman. He showed up on like Opie and Anthony and like the Shock Jock radio shows and Man Cow and shit. I know he's been around. He's kind of like a minor celebrity in Chicago. Right? What do I think about what he's gonna do this yeah. Saturday? Yeah, uh, he's fighting a guy that's two and zero. Oh, so the guy's not all that experienced. The guy's also twenty four years old, um, Mickey Gall. So. He's probably going to get his ass kicked. Yes. But that, I mean, okay. Think about the. I mean, think about this in any other sport. Like if I granted punk's been training for two years with a pretty good gym. So I'll give him that. But you're, you're never good at anything when you first start out ever. Yeah. But it's his Unless, first, this is the first, how, how old is punk? Fight somebody that's going to try and, and kill him. Yeah. And he's 37 years old. Oh, geez. He's cut up he's a 24 year old. Not on Jesus. in his athletic prime. He's been professional wrestling while it is fake. It is definitely not easy on the body. He's probably been concussed 10 times in his life. He's had back surgery. He's had shoulder surgery. So imagine like a guy like me or you rolling out of bed and being like, in two years, I'm going to go compete in the NBA or I'm going to go compete in football or I'm going to go compete in anything. It's not happening. Yeah, it's, so not, it's guy, not possible. Th- I mean, he's fighting a guy that's not that experienced, but this guy that he's not that experienced is still 24 years old and been training. And has two fights. So he He's, set this two years goal from the beginning. Like he he knew I want to give myself he said two one years. year. Okay. And his body is so beat up. He needed another and, fucking year. No, no. He got he had like shoulder surgery oh, and his back uh, disc herniated disc. So. He's just not in his prime. Like he He's could get really up. hurt though. Like permanently. Why injured. does he even want to do this? I don't know. Like it doesn't make sense. That's a good question. Uh, he wanted to. It's just a personal thing. To like prove to himself. Prove to himself that hey, I can do this. I can, I can do it. I can, if you put your mind, sort of one of those, if you put your mind to it and if you can do anything sort of thing. Well, you know, whatever. You think it'll be I mean, one and done I, after this? It'd be I like, oh, fuck this. <laughs> Listen, I'll tune in to see him get his ass kicked. I'll tell you that. Is that a big yeah. draw then for, uh, the I want to see what team? happens. It makes you, it makes you curious about it. Lots of I mean, there's, there's two fights on here that there's a heavyweight championship fight and there's a co-main event. That's a big heavyweight fight. And no one's talking about those fights. They're talking about CM Punk. So, for the USC's perspective, I think it is a big draw. I think that I mean that's why they signed him. They wouldn't sign, they wouldn't sign you off the street at zero and zero and be like, hey, you're gonna fight. So yeah, it's doing its job. We'll see what the pay per view vibes look like. But and then some nobody is just gonna kick his ass. But even I know from our MMA discuss UFC discussions, anything can fucking happen. There's really no way to call it. That's them. true. Anything can happen when it's two high level guys fighting each other. When it's a 37 year old man with no prior combat experience against a kid that's been training for two years and is 24 years old and is two and zero, oh, yeah, the likely outcome is that CM Punk's game. Likely, but you never know. Yeah, I mean he anyway, should. He might, if he can get a naked choke on the guy or something and lands in the right spot, you never know. You're you're right. I mean, you asked if if it's going to be a one and done. If he wins, yeah. they'll probably find him another fight. The only way that it's a one and done as if he loses horribly yeah. and no one bought the pay-per-view. Cause then uh, that's the whole reason is people buying this. 
But wow. if no one cares yeah. and he loses horribly, then what's the point? So he kind of just based the last two years on his life uh, riding on this one fight right now. Yeah, someone asked him, I read, I listened to an interview today and it was like, have you ever prepared, and this is like unique to humans, have you ever prepared for two years yeah. for just 15 minutes of your life? <laughs> oh shit, that's crazy to think about that, dude. <laughs> you know, like have you ever prepared for one moment, like this, put this much preparation into just that short of a time period? Yeah. Olympic athletes do that shit. Olympic athletes do that. Yeah. Well, yeah, and that's even, think about, you know, I think about like Usain Bolt and how he, he trains a year for 40 for nine seconds, seconds, nine seconds, 40 yeah. seconds, but it's the fucking most intense. No, it's not 40, 40 seconds. It's nine seconds. It's 40 yard dash. 40 yard dash. In, yeah, for nine seconds. Yes. Nine seconds. Yeah. Nine seconds, dude. And it's over like that. And you're the fucking flash. That guy is pretty amazing. Well, there was one uh, guy from, I forget which country, like Car- Caribbean country that been training. And then on the hurdles, he, he f- hit the first hurdle in the Olympics and yeah. fell and he oh. was done. Oh, was like, <laughs> shit. That's you've it. You've been training man. your entire life and you fuck up right immediately. immediately. Uh, shit. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's what uh, I would do. That's, uh, that's why Pretty much what I would do. <laughs> <laughs> so, ironically, CM Punk, big uh, comic book fan. Yeah. 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 I think he he might have even been on Comic Book Man. I've seen him on so many like geek things. Like he does a lot of like sh- signings at Comic Book. Yes, and conventions and stuff. And stuff. Yeah. Oof, right. I watched that Kevin Smith show by the way. Geeking oh, out. What'd you think, what'd you think Hugs? <laughs> Isn't it what exactly what we told you? You know what? It didn't bother me that much that they were cutting all over the place. It was that Grungberg should not be there. He clearly doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. No, he doesn't. <laughs> Kevin has to explain everything to him. He just. He yeah. is supposed to be the straight man to Kevin Smith. He is the straight man. But to his credit, he has been in Star Trek and Star Wars and every J.J. Abrams movie. Like, he's been in and a heroes. lot of weird shit and heroes, but he doesn't know. Yeah, he doesn't know. He's just the casual fucking comic book fan. Yeah, I don't know. I just feel like he shouldn't be there. I mean, I, I like think I, th- some of the interviews are good, but <laughs> you're right. It's just uh, all over the place. Yeah. I mean, I, I didn't mind that. They're trying to cram all the stuff and. I mean, it was just weird that the way they cut from one thing, the interviewing the guy from Deadpool, and also they're just cutting to something else. It's crazy. Yeah, they come back and they're like, "Okay, those guys are dead." <laughs> they, <laughs> never you know, with those guys. We never say goodbye to them. They uh, that interview with uh, the writers, Reese and uh, Wernick, uh, was kind of interesting because we learned that Ryan Reynolds paid out of his pocket to have them yeah. on have the writers on set with him. It's pretty crazy. He did so much out of his own pocket to make sure this movie is what it should have been. Yeah, I mean, there's some content there. There is. It's not there like is. it's without content. It's just I just think that Grunberg shouldn't be in there. <laughs> I did. If they padded it out to an hour and added, you know, a little bit more, I think I would watch. It. I think it See, would work out better. This is the thing that I don't understand why they don't do this. Is it a, maybe it's some kind of a licensing issue or something? Like, why can't they just every once in a while? Like people do this shit on YouTube all the time. Like they'll take they'll talk about something and then show some of the artwork and maybe like do a quick, like little rundown of it, of what you're talking about. So everybody can be on the same page. Kind of like the, well, they do it on comic book men with the thing where they show you the graphic and they show you this came out in 1972. Yeah. But they don't ever show you the artwork to the comic book. They just show you the cover. And then you're you're lucky if you see anything from the content. I see what you're saying. There's barely any fucking time in that show to do that. Everything is squished together. All right, King, that's the end of the news segment. Let's push on. After these messages, we'll be right back. Hey, Imran. Hey, Rug Boy. Wouldn't it be great since we're putting out all this great shows and great content that our listeners could support us in some kind of way, maybe with a website or something? You know what? I got an idea. Hang tight. I'll be right back. Jogging nerd. All right, listener. We have a virtual tip jar. Wowie zowie. It's called Patreon. Visit jockandnerd.com slash Patreon and you can support the show and help us help you. How you do that? You can make monthly donations, whether it be a dollar, 50 cents, five bucks, or you can donate in one large sum and you get bonus content and it only helps improve the show by getting us on better platforms and better equipment. Jocktastic. I hear change jingling in your pocket. <laughs> Don't fucking fuck me over, guys. Do it. I'm Jason. I'm Jeff. And I'm Blake from the History of Bad Ideas. And we'll get back to your regularly scheduled program here in just a second, Geek listeners. But we do a weekly podcast called The History of Bad Ideas. Yeah, we'll discuss things like television or movies or music or games or any other thing that falls into our geek-related podcast knowledge. 
You can find us on uh, Geek Life Radio Fridays, 10 a.m. Eastern, 9 a.m. Central, or Radio Hyphen Blitz. Saturday, 9 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Central, or you can listen to us whenever the hell you want on iTunes and Stitcher. Check us out. Roger says goodbye. Goodbye. Hi, I'm Mike White. And I'm Rob St. Mary. And we're the hosts of the Projection Booth Podcast. If you haven't heard of the Projection Booth, that's okay. But we think it's time that you have. We've been doing this for over three years now. And we think we're doing a pretty good show. Every week we look at a different film and put it in context. We try to bring you interviews with the people behind the films. Or experts on a subject matter covered in the film. We don't specialize in any one particular genre or type of film. We try to examine every aspect of cinema. From every corner of the globe. Even at three years, we barely just scratched the surface. But we're ready. We're ready for you to listen to us. That's right. Now's the time to give us a shot. Download us through our free smartphone app. Or through Stitcher, iTunes, Geek Juice Radio, Jackalope. Or our website. Projection-booth.com. We'll keep making great shows. Now it's your turn to listen to them. Doc and Nerd. So, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. on ABC is uh, coming back uh, Tuesday, September 20th, season four. It's the first show of the shows we love to watch that's coming back. And I kind of wanted to take a couple moments uh, and discuss what what we're going to see, what we, what we should expect from season four. Before you start, yeah. I, I won't even lie. I can't fake enthusiasm for the show. I am not excited. Well, this is, this is, this is before. part, this is, so hopefully you'll, you'll pet me. Okay. No, this. but this is part of some of the questions I have, uh, about this show is, okay. is okay. So where we left off at the end of season three, basically Lincoln and hive dead. There's a six month jump ahead. Daisy has gone rogue. Colson and Mac are after her. And Colson is also no longer the director of shield. Now the question is, is anybody excited for the show to come back? Like you got to imagine the only people still watching the show are going to be diehards. Uh, it's not, I don't think it's going to attract a lot of new people, but the stuff that we've, they're planning for this season seems like it may save the show. So, well, if you ask David Malofsky, everybody that goes to place the <laughs> yeah, that, that, you know, loves that fucking show. I think I, I mean, maybe we're wrong, but well, I I, you're right. And I thought about the TV awards and how there is a lot of hype because compared to the first season of Ace of Shield, eight, season three was like a vast improvement. It is. I said it before. I think it's the most improved show. But it's, I, I'll, is that I'll, enough? let me let me pour some water on that, yeah. though. Yeah, it got a lot of votes in that place. Hang your capes thing. But. If the network had a ton of confidence in the show, they wouldn't keep pushing it back. And I think this season it's at like 9 p.m. It's in an hour Central later, time, 9 p.m. slot. Yes. Yeah. It's an hour back than it used to be, which is an hour back when it used to debate debut. So it's been pushed back two hours and four seasons. Oh, that means that's the show a good is point. not. It started at means, seven, didn't it? And then yes, it moved to eight that, and now that it's at nine. Shit. That means the network is not that hyped about this. This hmm. That means there's not a ton of excitement coming into this overall, generally. Nationwide, the, the network's like, yeah, this isn't drawing a ton of ratings. No, this We're show is something else on its way out. Yeah, yeah, well, good point. I also saw, but then I saw this article on Collider that made a lot of good points. And basically the headline was why Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is the X-Men show you should be watching. And, you know, if the, with their use of Inhumans uh, moving into the season, it that may be a good analogy. So, look, here's what's going to happen season four. We're going to meet a lot of new people. The highest profile one, of course, we discussed Ghost Rider. Uh, but not Johnny Blaze Ghost Rider. This is the younger, newer generation Ghost Rider, Robbie Reyes, who drives a car, a muscle car. He's being played by Gabriel Luna. We actually have uh, a couple of photos. Uh, I will put it in the show notes of him in his kind of Ghost Rider jacket that has like the top of a rectangle on it. I don't know. What is that? An upside down U. But that's what it looked like in the comic book. The, the first episode of season four is titled Ghost. So we're going to get into Ghost Rider right away. And now this is introducing mysticism to the show, which is probably how they're going to tie in Doctor Strange in November. So that's one thing they got to start getting all mystical. And uh, it'll be interesting to see how Simmons, Sciency Simmons, is going to react to like a mystical thing in this universe now. Um, other interesting casting, there's uh, Lily Burtzell is uh, playing an actress in the recurring role of Lucy, a beautiful woman with a haunting quality who has a very violent streak because of things that have happened in her past. Mallory Jensen has been cast to play the robot Ada. 
during season four. We'll get to that. The LMD. And this one, I think, is the craziest. Chris from The Walking Dead. The, the actor who plays Chris, he's Chris. playing... Chris is uh, Travis's son, the other son. Oh, okay. Not Nick, Wait. the other guy. Travis? Who the fuck was Travis? Travis was the father. The f- his kid from his er- other marriage. From the, you know, when he came in. Chris, the fucking uh, brown skin kid. The one who's like, who starts killing zombies and gets really yeah, good okay. at killing. Uh, okay. What's his name? His name is... Uh, Lorenzo James Henry, he's playing Gabe Reyes, which is Robbie Reyes' brother who's in a wheelchair, which is straight from the comic book. So, Gabriel Luna and Chris from Fear the Walking Dead, which has got to be... Spoiler alert. I mean, Chris is probably going to die then by the end of this uh, season of Fear the Walking oh, Dead. Fear the Walking Dead. Fear, yeah, not, yeah, yeah, Fear the Walking Dead. Chris from Fear the Walking Dead. I thought that was interesting. So, look for Chris to get the axe on Fear the Walking Dead. Let, let me ask you a serious question. Yeah. You get excited when you hear Lorenzo James Henry is going to be on Agents of Shield. Yeah, because that means that he's going Why? to kill him in Fear of the Walking Dead. <laughs> like what? 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 What's making you excited about that? He's such a good actor. No, I don't know. It's just there's what? new cast. It's just because it's just because you noticed his face. There's, You're I like, mean, oh, I know that face. Look, it's Crossy. He's uh, he's on a show. Why is he doing this show? What's going to happen? Uh, uh <laughs> yeah, I, whatever. It's new people. It's a good. What's going to happen? There's going to be new happen? people. An actor on two different shows. Oh my god! How is he gonna? How is he gonna handle the workload, guys? I don't. Uh, I don't see how this is possible. His booking agent's gonna be very busy. You're doing a very solid job of convincing <laughs> me. This is gonna be great. <laughs> okay. What about the fact that they're gonna start dealing with science and magic this season? You know, we saw the other tease at the end of last season that uh, Holdcliffe, uh, whatever that scientist. He has an LMD, a life model decoy, a female, possibly a sex robot. I don't know. Her name is Ada. <laughs> <laughs> I would uh, program uh, some naughty stuff in there. Uh, her name is Ada. So we're going to have a lot of science and magic blending LMDs. Uh, Daisy is full on Quake. She's pretty much Quake. We saw in the newspapers. They're calling her Quake. She's a, a vigilante. We've seen her powers expand. She can almost fly. And uh, apparently when we come back, She's not going to be doing well. Like, she's been abusing her powers. She's drained, and they're chasing her. I kind of want to see, like, this dark goth Daisy. That's kind of cool. Anything dark goth uh, Chloe Benet, I'm, I'm in. Right? Any look any look for Chloe Benet except her maybe shaving her head would be awesome. Yeah, she could probably play that off, too. She could probably pull yeah. that off, too. Yes. She could probably right. pull that off. Uh, we got S.H.I.E.L.D. will have a new director. They've cast this dude, Jason O'Mara, as the new director of S.H.I.E.L.D., but we don't know what his name is. And they've said it's somebody who's like an important character in Marvel canon from the 40s. Okay. Uh, and uh, and everything, of course, now takes place post Sokovia Accords. Everyone knows of enhanced people. There's no hiding it. So there's a here's a new dynamic, you know, and uh, that could be interesting. I'm excited for that. Anthony, anything? Is it doing anything for you? <laughs> Uh, I think what? my dick is crawling into my stomach. Uh, it's inverting. Oh, no. Oh, shit. Where do we leave off with the bad guy in this thing? Because uh, the hive is dead. Hive is He's hive dead. is gone and Hydra is gone. Hydra's always going to kind of be around, I would assume. But yeah, there, we don't know what a yeah. bad guy, who the bad guy is in this. It could be like shield versus shield. It could be. Was there something about the Inhumans being on the table now? Yeah, they have. Kevin Feige has said uh, that. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. can use classic Inhumans because... Yeah, because Inhumans, the movie, is supposedly it. not happening. Yeah. yeah. So what does this mean? Are we going to see Black Bolt, Medusa, Lockjaw? I mean, to see a big slobbery dog transporting, that'd be kind of crazy. Would it work on this show? <laughs> it's going to cost too much. You're not going to do it. Yeah, right? If you do it, it's going to suck. Look, the thing about Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is that Moving it back to this nine o'clock time slot, it's the kiss of death. I mean, but, that's all it but is. they could be edgier and darker, which is what they're I know, promising. But not none of people are gonna watch it though. Well, that was my follow-up yeah. question is how many returning people you think this show like, is gonna get? This is what has to happen. You have to make the show cheap enough so it could stay on with low ratings. Yeah. Mm. And you can't do all the effects and stuff. So you have to change the tone of the show. It could be if it's more of a drama. That doesn't need that much stuff. I mean, it's a more cerebral thing. Then maybe you can pull it off. 
I see where you're going, Rugs, and I kind of feel yeah, like a good point. does the show need a complete creative reboot? Uh, you know, like new show it won't new be writers. the same show. It won't be the same show. And the people who wa- tuned in to watch it, unless you have Chloe Benet tits hanging out, <laughs> like there's really nothing to tune in for. Look, t- I mean, like I'm just saying, like I mean, how you need something to keep asses in the seat. So what is it going to be? You don't if you don't have the big uh, action scenes anymore. You don't have all the money that's pouring in for something that's in the later hours. I don't know. I mean, I think I think a change of tone for the show could save it. And this is what I'm hoping is why I'm excited is that the 9 p.m. slot will provide this darker tone. You can have more sex. You can have more violence. And now you guys keep saying 9 p.m. slot is the death slot. However, traditionally, this slot has been held for like really good dramas like your your scandal and your ER was at nine o'clock and how to get away with murder. It's very interesting to put this show in that time slot when people are usually looking for like their courtroom dramas or their fucking law and orders. Uh, and I, I got I really appreciate your optimism that don't ever let that go away. I from think you. it'll be interesting that people will be flipping at a later hour and they well, might find more new viewers. What, what time is flash on seven, seven and central, which is eight for you. Yeah. Oh, okay. What time is uh, Arrow on? Same thing. Seven. Seven Central. Eight. He's eight Eastern. Seven Central. So she is two hours later. Like Gotham though. is on at what time? That's probably same. eight. Same. Yep. Okay. So there you go. Supergirl be- was also the same ta- same time slot. So all of those very successful shows or somewhat successful shows are on that time. So yeah. that means something. Could we see Peggy Carter in flashbacks? Maybe. Possible. I mean, they're not doing a season three of Agent Carter, so yeah, that her uh, pilot. I think that conviction show may have gotten picked up. I'm starting to see ads I, and shit. I I do mean to pick on Shield, so I'm not going to say I don't mean to because I actually do mean to pick on Shield. It's just not a great show, and you know, it, it, yeah. it, it, it's not, and it's not necessarily like it's a bad show. It's just a show that exists, in my opinion. But you don't think it's gotten better enough? It's uh, uh, in its course to. I mean, it gets there's it has episodes where I'm like, oh, this is entertaining. But then it has episodes where I was like, oh, this is not that great. You know, it's just a meandering show, really. I mean, what's the one thing like you point to Shield other than Chloe Benet? What's the one thing where you go, man, Shield is really good at this. I mean, like, what's the thing? Uh, what's the, what's the yeah, sauce? The ensemble. I feel like they're do good they do, at. Do they do ensemble cast better than anybody else? No, they they got the only thing I can point to is at least Shield has like a diverse cast. Yeah, it had, cool. it had, yes, yes, but, it, but 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 diversity for just being diverse for the sake of diverse. Being, yeah, but yeah, I think it's got a. Good. De- I think it's got a. I think what it does everything decently. It's got a decent yeah. budget. It does decent acting, decent action. It's everything is decent. It just doesn't go above the board. I mean, everything is done very well. I and mean, even the writing is decent. Everything's good. It's just there's nothing that's spectacular that kind of will rise above all the other stuff. Yeah. And I think to that point, I think you need something. You need one thing that you're really Ghost really Rider. Good. That's what they're adding. And they're hoping that it's going to bring people. It might be too late. It might be too th- late. Yeah. That. Do you think the Ghost Rider is going to save the show or is it too late? Listen, I want the show to be good, but I don't know if Ghost Rider is the move. I just don't think it is odd. It is odd. And, and, it's, and it's, it's, not, it's not the Ghost Rider that we all know yeah. either. But, you know, they have another opportunity to, to it maybe introduce. Here's the thing. Look, if they aren't worried about this tying into the larger MCU, they now they feel like, oh, they pushed us all the way in the corner in this 9 p.m. time slot. I kind of hope that they're just going to go, you know what? Ghost? Fuck it. Let's go crazy. Let's bring in like the new young generation of heroes. Maybe you, you, yeah, you use some of these say. new people, like a, the new Nova, or you know, you could introduce, you can mention like a Miles Morales, or you can mention this new generation, like the new generation. Young Avengers were cool. Yes, Remember the, yes. the guy who, who was the he was the black guy that was like kind of Captain America ish. I forgot what his name. It was a while ago. Is he still even active? Uh, I don't know who you're talking about. Oh come on! You didn't read the Young Avengers. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's find derail the whole thing. <laughs> I, have to, I, have to Google, I have to Google it now. Google it while you Google that. I don't know. I I think, like Rug Boy said, I want the show to be I died to be all right. But it's, it's it's there's just nothing that you latch onto every week, and you're like, I just I want to see this performance. I want to see. But Fitz and Simmons are a couple now. We're gonna get to see. Oh a my couple. God, Fitz and Simmons are a couple. Oh. 
I mean, Fitz is good. Yeah. Simmons is good. That might you know? ruin it. Actually, they should not be together and happy. That's uh, what what good? What fun is they're that? Good. There's they're good. It's everyone just, is just good or like okay. I I see right. what you're saying, and I kind of I. I kind of want to see them do more more ensemble family. Like, make it the X-Men show. Show me different pairings of characters going off and doing things, you know, cutting back and forth in different subplots. There's so much potential there. And they just kind of not feel like they're restrained by having to, you know, try to tie into the larger movies. Just- see, I, I, I even, I'm even i even going to disagree with that. I, I don't think there's potential there. No. Potential is something that we haven't seen but we're like we're catching glimmers of we're in, we're three seasons in on this cast <laughs> there's no more potential you could say potential like a seat like halfway through the season like yeah i could see potential for this getting a lot better when you're three seasons in potential is not a word you want to be using to describe a show that's a good point that's a good point this is season four i this potentially be... see this getting better in five seasons at the, yeah but, at, at this point we should it should have been there should have been like a, a, a a great storyline, something to really invest in to come back. It's just not, it's not it's catching. It's nothing. It's not yeah. catching with enough viewers to make ABC happy. It, if it did, it, it wouldn't push it back twice. They should scrap it and do Young Avengers. So and who, who's in the Young way, Avengers? He's a, uh, well, you have Patriot. Patriot. Oh, there okay. you go. All right. Patriot is like this. He's a black dude. He's ca- kind of Captain America ish. You got Hulkling, which is like a kind of like a, he's a scroll that, he takes the form of something that looks like Hulk. Okay. Uh, you have um, Wiccan, who is like a magic guy who can do magic shit, like fucking like teleporting and shit like that. You have a prodigy who can make anything like like tech. And you have a Hawkeye. Kate but, Bishop, the girl Hawkeye. Yeah, the girl Hawkeye. So you who- can change her name. Dude, who she is awesome. I I somebody should bring her into a TV show somewhere. Like Kate Bishop Hawkeye is actually she's bad. Just call her Kate Bishop. Yeah, Bye. don't even call her Hawkeye. Be like Kate Bishop. She's just an incredible archer. But like they're just young. They're young. They're like diverse. They're you know they're all, all across the board. There's gay characters. There's all kinds of great things that are now and you know you know in the fabric of what we're trying to do with Marvel. What they're trying to do with diversity. It's all there. So, I mean, they have a property. They're just never going to use it. It's That's never going to get made into a movie. So put it on TV. Vision? Vision was in it at one point, I guess. There was Iron Lad. Iron Lad. Iron Lad. Iron, uh, Rex, we, uh, you, you weren't on the show where we talked about uh, them bringing Runaways to Hulu. Yeah, that'd that, be cool, right? Isn't that a great idea? I've uh, I remember we we would talk about Runaways. I think you'd they're the that, kids yeah. of the bad guys. Yeah. They're like a bunch of kids of bad guys that they don't know that their parents are bad guys, so they run away from their parents. Already sounds more interesting than Agents of Shield season four. Let me tell you. What. Oh shit! Here's we here's around the flip. We got him around the flip. <laughs> I was gonna say the the problem with Agents of Shield from its start is they so they didn't have like a, an actual storyline to base this off of, right? So yeah, that's you know that that provides you a lot of creative freedom or whatever. But they never settled on a thing. Like I keep mentioning, something that the sauce, the secret sauce that makes this an awesome show. They never settled on one thing. They don't have no yeah. They don't have their formula down, and they kept experimenting with different things, and nothing's ever completely hit because they've never had a source material to go back to. And then they got rid of like a couple of characters that were cool. Yeah, Yeah, you lost. Yeah, you lost Hunter and Bobby, and they never got their show. So. What the fuck was that all about? Why do you have to fucking write them off? We, uh, people love them. They'll probably come back. Maybe. All right. We'll see. Uh, you know we'll what? see. Well, you, but you guys all have good points. And I'm just, that's the main reason why I'm excited is to see how. Oh, Ghost Rider? Yeah. Ghost Rider and how they're going to play. You know, they have this Inhumans thing now they can play with. And then there's I, robots. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. should go away and they should just do Secret Warriors or Young Avengers and that should be that. I do agree. I just wish that there wasn't a S.H.I.E.L.D. connection. Like, just make another show that's nothing to do with S.H.I.E.L.D., but there's superheroes in it. From from the start, it, when Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. first came out, they everyone thought that you were going to see Avengers Light. That's what people wanted to see. And when you didn't get that in the first few episodes, you were, everyone was disappointed and left. Yeah, people, you know, and they, I, you know, it's funny because they gave you the Maria Hill and they gave you the Nick Fury. And we're like, oh, oh and, but that was it. They, then nothing. Right. That was it. And then you see the Avengers on the TV in the background or a mention uh, occasionally. So, 
September 20th, everyone. Tuesday. Yay. Get excited. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, gang. Hey, I'm hoping it's good. I'm hoping it's good. That's all. Here's to a sexy, hot, dark Daisy Quake. Okay, moving on. The Jock and Nerd Podcast. We got a speak pipe. We got some feedback. Uh, I'm just going to play it. Here it is. Hello, Jock and Nerd Podcast. This is Mr. Throwback Thursday from the Mr. Throwback Thursday Podcast. How do we make this call relevant to both shows? I ask you a question about a hip-hop comic book. Tell me, in your professional opinions, because I have my own, if the Nine Rings of Wu-Tang series is not the most horrible, horrible set of comic books in recent memory. I believe it came out in 1999. Uh, I did not get a hold of it then. I was 1999. I was probably deployed to the Mediterranean or the Persian Gulf or somewhere stupid like that. But I do have a digital copy, and as with all things Wu-Tang, I have to get a hold of it. So I have Shaolin style for the PS1. Also horrible, but you know it's Wu-Tang, so I support. Um, so I want you guys to check out Nine Rings of Wu-Tang. Tell me if it is not uh, amateurish. Uh, looks like a high schooler put the whole thing together, both drawings and uh, speech. Uh, yeah, so check it out. Let me know what you think. If you need to get your hands on it, you can always email me at uh, mrthrowbackthursday at gmail.com, and I might be able to find through nefarious means a way to get them to you. All right, keep doing what you're doing, and uh, we'll talk at you later. Thanks, Mr. Throwback Thursday. I love these guys. I got something. Yeah, what do you got? First off, thank you, Mr. Throwback Thursday, for calling in. Um, but what a rousing uh, introduction to something you want me to read. You go, it's horrible. <laughs> you want it? This is the most terrible thing ever. <laughs> you should read this. Oh, okay. This makes me want to read this. So I've never. Well, send it over, buddy. Let's do it. I know. Uh, Mr. Throwback Thursday, you're going to have to email us a copy because I looked online. You, uh, there's a link to images. Uh, I found some reviews. It was made by Image Comic Books, 1999. Uh, or the idea was. There was going to be nine issues, one for each uh, member of the Wu-Tang Clan, and only five came out, and then it was canceled. Uh, the the art, honestly, the art's not bad. It's of the time, but from the reviews that I've read, I heard the story is just really bad. The art, I didn't mind the art too much. I'd love to check it out, Mr. Throwback Thursday. Uh, it's just the Wu-Tang, they're big geeks, man. They love comic books. Did, did you guys ever watch the Chappelle show? Yes. Yes. Do you remember when the Asian community drafted the Wu Tang? Yeah, well, the race, the race draft, oh, racial draft, yeah. <laughs> and then you got all the Asians in the crowd going, throwing up the W's and going, Woo. We <laughs> choose Woo. the RZA, the Jizza, all the dirty bastard. <laughs> so, that, was, that was a great episode. That, that was, was awesome. That was fucking hilarious. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the artwork looks like typical Jim Lee clones, right? Typical like of the time, image of the late nine, 1999, 2000. Yeah kind of anime inspired because they it's kind of like they love kung fu and comic books uh method man ghost fates killer are two big superhero geeks uh method man's on that uh he's i think he's consulting on luke cage and oh, cool. uh, yeah and he goes sometimes goes by the name johnny blaze a uh, ghost rider reference he also uh wrote a song called the riddler for the batman forever soundtrack ghost face killer is obsessed with iron man name you keep saying killer you're, you're really killer. frustrating me sorry yeah, that's, that's a different guy. <laughs> but a little A H V. Hilla uh, loves Iron Man. Named his debut solo album after the Ironclad superhero. He has and he's a, has a cameo role in the first Iron Man movie, but uh, the scene got deleted uh, from the final movie. But he also has a song on the Iron Man soundtrack. So the obviously these guys are become book geeks. They're like, hey, we should make a comic book. But I, it wasn't very good, apparently. But look, gang, if you want to send us a speak pipe, all you got to do is go to jockandnerd.com slash speak pipe or just go to jockandnerd.com. There's a big tab right on the right. It says, leave us a message. You have 90 seconds. Leave us your thoughts. We'll play it on the show. And I've I've sent them four speak pipes on their show. So <laughs> we've been kind of, yeah. yeah, yeah. We're kind of trading speak pipes here. Uh, Mr. Throwback Thursday is a really fun show. Though. I'm, I'm, do you want to tell people what we're on before we do our half hour long closing segment <laughs> on ways to contact us? Finish what all you those should things. Review, yes. Why you should tell friends. Okay. Fuck on all. Our, 
no, never ending end, ending for our show. <laughs> Fuck all that shit. Here's yes. the important message for this episode, listener. It's where you can listen to the show. Say you just came to our website and you click play, right? That's one way to listen. But you can find us on iTunes. Subscribe, leave a rate and review. If you have an Android Windows phone, you can find us on Google Play. All these links are in the show notes. Uh, if you have an Alexa, a device that has Alexa, Amazon, you can literally speak to it and say, play the Jock and Nerd podcast. It pulls our latest show from TuneIn, which we're also on. We're on Player FM, and now we are on iHeartRadio. I don't know anyone who uses iHeartRadio, but check out these stats. I did a little bit of research. I was like, iHeartRadio, okay. They have 85 million registered users. Oh, shit. We're automatically in a platform with an additional 85 million users. 245 million active monthly listeners. There's 800 radio stations. iHeartRadio owns stations in 150 markets. Uh, this is uh, a huge uh, new bunch of ear holes. So, listener, I don't know if you use iHeartRadio. If you know someone who uses iHeartRadio, if you want to check it out, all you got to go is jockandnerd.com slash iHeartRadio. There's a two-day festival in Las Vegas called the iHeartRadio Fest. They do a lot of exclusive uh, a lot of exclusive music and concerts. Yeah. So, cool. yeah, and this was all through our media host, Lipson. I, had, I forgot. I submitted, like, a couple months ago, and then they were like, you're at iHeartRadio. There's 85 million extra people with potential to listen to the show now. It's pretty cool. Awesome. Well, welcome if you're listening on iHeartRadio right now. Yeah, let us know. Leave us an email. Show at Jock and Nerd. Uh, also, well, one other thing. I was on another show recently. Uh, I'm in a couple of Facebook podcasting groups. And usually these groups are filled with people who are, they have like coaching podcasts and marketing and entrepreneur and uh, just nothing I'm interested in. Until one day, this guy Dave posts, hey, I would, I need someone to talk about these three iconic superhero movie moments. Anybody interested? I was like, this, yes, this. So I'll put a link in the show notes. It's off the Hollow Nine Network. The show is called Iconic Moments in Movie History Podcast. We talk about the moment in Superman 2 at the end where Superman kneels in front of Zod but he's tricked him. Remember, he has his powers. Yeah, back, and then he crushes his hand. Crushes his hand. Yeah. Yeah. Great. And then, and then, and then, that's the, then he kills him, basically. Yeah. He uh he he throws him down the ice slide, and that's the last you see of him. Like he slides down a big cavern, and then the big guy. Remember, the big guy just tries to fly, and he falls immediately, and he's just gone. And then yeah. and then Margot Kidder's like, you know what, lady, you're a real pain in the ass, and punches out the chick. Uh, great moment. Uh, Everybody just falls to their death. They just all die. No, no controversy, though, unlike Man of Steel. Who says Superman doesn't kill? It happened in 1980, <laughs> people. Oh, shit. Pre-Henry uh, Cavill and the Snyders. And then the second moment we talked about was the Joker from 1989 Batman, uh, where he says, where does he get those wonderful toys? In fact, that whole kind of the whole museum scene. And the third moment was the crow, was the moment where Ernie Hudson says, Move and you're dead. And uh, Eric Draven says, I say I'm dead and I move. And then we talked about the mask. There was a bonus, honorable mention, smoking. Oh. Uh, it was a fun time. Uh, and, uh, just totally random. I got on the call and I was like, hey, I don't even know. I don't remember what podcast this is, guys, <laughs> but I'm happy to be here. Like, I didn't know the name. I just, they were cool guys, though. So, link to do in your research. Show notes. Yeah. No, I didn't even have to research for those three, man. I was like, no, nah, those are burned into your skull. Yeah, I was like, these are three excellent moments. I could talk oh, I'm, about. I'm shit. referring to the fact that you didn't know the name of the show you were on. No, I didn't. Whatever. I, look, I was like, whatever. I'm helping you out. What the fuck is the name of the show? <laughs> uh, it's a Hollow Nine Network, but it's the the N is a number nine, which is also a little confusing, and I couldn't find it later. <laughs> All right, moving on. There's plenty of ways to contact us. jockinnerd.com slash contact. If you want to review the show, jockinnerd.com slash review. Rugboy, where the fuck can they find you? You can find me on Twitter at really Rugboy, and you can see me Twitter war against some dudes who like think they know about Godzilla. <laughs> they don't know shit, you can see me Harass like all kinds of people. It's fun. I try and harass people every day. I try and get someone <laughs> pissed off every day. All Come right. on and join the fun. <laughs> Your Twitter Godzilla war, uh, fantastic. That's it's also. Funny. That's yeah, if you, you can listen to that on, on Patreon. We get into more detail about that. Yeah, and Big Bad Ben from the Twitter, he left, he left me alone. Oh, he, he did? Never, never did you me. win? Yeah, yeah. I won, yeah. I Technically, I won. Listener, join our membership, exclusive membership fan club, jockandnerd.com slash Patreon. There's a free 
clip up right now of uh, Rugboy and myself arguing over the get down. And then uh, once once you uh, support us, you have access to Rug's Godzilla Twitter war story, which is pretty Along hilarious. Along with many other things. And like seven hours of additional bonus content. That's it for this show, though, gang. Thanks for listening. Remember, tell a friend. Turn to the person next to you. Give him one of these. Chuck and nerd. Little whisper. You're going to get him excited. Get him interested. We love you listening. Thanks for every second you spend with us. This is the Jock and Nerd Podcast. My name is Imran. My name's Anthony. He's the jock. And he's the nerd. We'll check you next time. Not funny. Oh, do you even podcast? Yeah.